Hello, Pastor Nick. Good afternoon. God bless you, brother. Good okay. afternoon to you as well. So how are you doing nowadays? I'm doing well by God's grace. Okay. So uh, this is a program, Asiska Polaru, which is uh, produced uh, in a Nepali version as well as English version. So this program has been starting um, two past two years. So the main, uh, the main purpose of this program is to um, share the testimony blessing the new revelation and the new excitement uh, to the old people here in the earth so i would like to welcome in my program thank you for having me praise god okay so nick uh, could you please introduce yourself to our audience yeah sure i'm pastor nick gentile born and raised in rochester new york saved by the Lord Jesus Christ in April of 2009 after 10 years of being deceived in the deception known as witchcraft, um, faithfully serving the Lord the last 13 years by His grace for His glory. I currently attend the Lamp Community Church, uh, which is located at 1775 East Avenue, um, right across the street from the East Avenue Wegmans, right near Winton Road, in the back of the historic Brighton Presbyterian Church. And I just love the Lord. I love Jesus. I live for Him. And I, I want to be more like Jesus every day and in my interactions with people. And, you know, I started a ministry called Lord in Christ Ministries. And the focus is on glorifying our triune God, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, and doing everything I can to, uh, to fulfill the Great Commission, to advance God's kingdom, and... Uh, to just make Jesus known to the entire world and to see the sa the law saved in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, thank you so much for, for your briefly introduction to our audience. Uh, very interesting point that you shared now. You you accepted Jesus Christ from the that witchcraft, uh, that trap, that um, some the problem. Uh, so I will come later about that topic and sure. I, I would love to talk on that uh, issue. So before w we go on that uh, issue, so um, Pastor Nick, so could you tell me that uh, when and how you accepted Jesus Christ? So it was April 2009. Uh, like I said, I was caught up in witchcraft in the form of New Age occultism which is very complex, it's multifaceted. There are different branches of this deception. I was caught up in a few of those branches uh, that make up witchcraft. And, uh, you know, I wanted nothing to do with Jesus, wanted nothing to do with Christianity. I ran from the truth. I, want, I was looking for the truth, but I didn't want Jesus to be the truth. And Jesus says, but he is the truth. And he said, I, in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. So. I ran from the truth, but through a series of amazing occurrences or events, 
orchestrated by the Lord Jesus Christ um, in April of 2009, ironically at a Messianic Jewish Passover Seder. And I say ironically because I am not Jewish. I'm a Gentile and my last name is Gentile. So the Lord has, and for those who don't know, a Gentile is a non-Jew. The Lord has a very funny sense of humor. And so it was in April of 2009 at a Messianic pa community Passover Seder through a, a ministry, uh, not a ministry, through a congregation, a Messianic congregation called Shema Yisrael, which became my first home church. I was saved. I trusted in Christ as my Lord and Savior, had my sins forgiven, and I've been following him by his grace for his glory ever since. Wow, wonderful, fantastic. And uh, Pastor Nick, I just would like to ask the one question that uh, um, here on the earth, here in the world, so, so many people, they have the one uh, general, their understanding that they, call, they, they explain that all we are different, but going to the center central point that means god is just one god so all religion religion are same so in your understanding based on your faith statement how do you just justify that jesus is only one way i justify that because jesus rose from the dead and so what he said is of paramount importance what he said is true um you can look at it in, in the lives of the apostles prior to christ's resurrection they were terrified they were hiding in the upper room, for instance. And then when Jesus, when they encountered the risen Christ, and then on the day of Pentecost, uh, 50 days after Christ's uh, resurrection from the dead, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them, and they were different men. They went out, they preached the gospel boldly, they were beaten, they were in jail. They, they were released from jail, and they went out preaching. They went from being terrified you take Peter, for instance, he preaches that powerful message on, uh, you know, on the, the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. But he, was, he denied Jesus. He denied Jesus three times and was terrified like the rest of the apostles. And yet, 50 days later, what do we see him doing? We see him preaching to the Jewish people, preaching a powerful sermon, and the Lord using that to save over 3,000 people. And so you can see that Jesus Christ changes lives because Jesus is alive through the power of his Holy Spirit he changes lives and when you look at all these different religions they all believe in completely different things so they can't all be true they can't all be paths to the one true God it's impossible there's a doctrine or a, an idea a concept called pluralism where all of these different belief systems Hinduism Islam Buddhism Sikhism Jainism animism Judaism all these different ideologies, everyone, paganism, they all lead, Wicca, they all lead to the one true God in Christianity. But the words of Christ are penetrating and they are true. He is, he, again, if he rose from the dead and there's sufficient historical evidence to come to that conclusion, then what he said is true. Because this is what we know. A Confucian, Confucianism, that's another one. Confucius is in the grave. Buddha is in the grave. Muhammad is in the grave. Spiritually, I believe they're in hell. But their bodies are in the grave right now. Okay, Every religious leader, even Moses and Abraham, they're in the grave. But Jesus rose bodily from the grave. And because that's true, his words are true. And he, as he said, he is the resurrection and the life. And he proved that by rising from the dead. So I'm going to trust him and his words over the words of any other religious leaders, avatars, religious founders in the world because he's the only one that rose bodily from the dead and we have sufficient historical evidence to demonstrate that we don't have really time right now to go into the historical evidence but every um, attempted every alternative theory that has been raised to explain why the empty tomb exists has been refuted and has fallen short these are not sufficient explanations for why the tomb is empty, and why so many people, not just the apostles, but people like Pastor Ashok, myself, and many others I know personally, and those I don't, have had their lives changed by trusting in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is that Jesus is the eternal Son of God. He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. We see that in John 20, 31. And he died for our sins. He was buried to prove he died, and he rose from the dead for our justification or to make us right with God. 
That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, which is the gospel. So that's why. That's why I can say that confidently. I know what he's done in my life, and I believed a bunch of different things before Jesus saved me. And I was deceived, and I know that now. So, like I said, I was hostile to Christianity. I wasn't born into a Christian home. I didn't become a Christian because of a vulnerable time in my life. It was a supernatural transformation. It was a supernatural encounter with the risen Christ. Only way I would be a Christian today. And not just a Christian, but a pastor. Okay, so Pastor James, according to you, are saying that I came to know that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that means he defeated death and Amen. he overcome on it. That's why Jesus is God and he is the only one way to, to go to heaven. Is that right? That is right. He oh, said, thank- I am the way, mm-hmm. the truth, and the life, and no man, no person, no human being can come to the Father, can inherit eternal life can be in heaven with God apart from Jesus. Wow. If you yes. don't have faith in the Son in his name, mm-hmm. the wrath of God abides over you. Oh, John yes. the Baptist said this in John chapter 3. Jesus said you must be born again. How are you born again? By trusting in him and receiving the gift of his Holy Spirit, which we call regeneration. Mm-hmm. So this is what it means. And this is the only way you can inherit eternal life. Okay. Thank you so much. So now we take a small break. Thank you so much uh, after this uh, short break. So I just would like to welcome again Pastor Nick. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. And to you, uh, just before you explain about the witchcraft, from that bondage, from the chains of the witchcraft, you could come to Christ. You could accept Jesus Christ. Uh, could you please tell our friends that how long years did you suffer in witchcraft and how did you overcome on it? About 10 years. Um, it was over nine, but very close to 10. And I got caught up in witchcraft because I was at the funeral wake of a family member. And all of a sudden the thought occurred to me, which had never occurred to me prior to this night, what happens to us when we die? So it really hit me, the thought really hit me hard. And I was there with my mother. I asked her, I said, mom, what happens to us when we die? And she said, oh, I'm reading this book by this psychic medium named Sylvia Brown, who was, a, who was a very popular psychic medium in the United States. She used to, she passed away, I believe in 2011, but for years, uh, she was very popular. She used to come on this TV show called the Montel Williams Show on Wednesdays. Um, he was kind of like Oprah. And she used to make predictions, psychic predictions, and do readings and all kinds of things, okay? tell people you know because she claimed to be communicating with the dead ancestors or dead relatives of people anyways so my mom said she was reading a book by this woman I believe it was the book the other side and back she wrote several books maybe she ghost wrote them I don't know (laughs) Mm -hmm. and someone else write them I'm not sure but the point is I think she was reading that book one of the first ones that she put out she published and um, she told me some things from the book that she had read uh, namely that Pretty much everyone pretty much goes to the other side, which was the name that Sylvia Brown came up with for heaven. And there is no hell. And, you know, everyone is 30 years old and the weather is beautiful. And you, you're you there with your family and your friends and people you knew during your earthly life. And I thought that sounded wonderful. So when I got home, I started reading the book and I was pretty much hooked. Um, and so I started reading books from other psychic mediums and namely James Von Prague and um, John Edwards, who's also another TV medium back in the day. And um, eventually I really got into Sylvia Brown's material. And she, she wrote several books, like I said. And for my birthday in t- 2003, when I turned 18, I was given a, a set of books written by Sylvia Brown called The Journey of the Soul series. And it purported to tell people, you know, what happens to us when we go to heaven and about reincarnation because she used to teach about reincarnation and that, 
there was no hell, but really bad people, when they died, they'd go through what was called the left door and they'd come right back into life. They didn't get to go on the other side and, you know, and how beautiful it was and learn and get to spend time with their families and all this other stuff. So, I mean, I really devoured her material, this series of books, and I ended up getting a lot of other books that she wrote, buying a lot of other books and receiving them as gifts. And I even pursued becoming a priest, a minister in her church called the Church of Nova Spiritus, the New Spirit, which was basically an eclectic, pagan, in a sense, pagan church, even though she called it a, a Gnostic, she called it a Gnostic Christian church, but it was really just a combination of different belief systems merged into one, um, you know, syncretistically merged into one. And it never worked out. And I thank God for that. You know, I reached out to her several times and she never responded. No one from her office or from her organization responded to me, to my request to learn how to become a minister. But uh, didn't stop me from following her and embracing what she taught for a long time. But eventually I, there, I started seeing some cracks with her, cracks of the situation. And I discovered that she had made some false predictions and you know, her predictions were very public. Like I said, she was on television making these bro these these very uh, bold proclamations about, you know, this person and that person. And she made predictions about or proclamations about people dying that were discovered later on actually being alive. And, you know, she told the parents of this one young man, I think his name is Sean Hornbeck, that he had been kidnapped and he was killed. I have something like that. And they found him alive. So she made predictions like this that, you more and more that were exposed as false so i ended up moving on from her and i would i just dabbled and en dabbled with and entertained a lot of different belief systems a lot of different ideologies mainly around psychic mediums but also ancestor worship and different forms of divination different forms of deception different forms of spiritual darkness uh, demonic deceptions doctrines of devils as the bible describes them and I used to go from 2005 to 2007, I went to this spiritualist camp called Lilydale, which is not too far from where I live in Rochester, New York. It's a couple hours away by driving. And um, every year, the first thing I would do when I went there, I went there with my mother and my mom's friend. And I would go to a place called Inspiration Stump. And this was like an, this was a little theater in this opening in the woods there because it's in, near a wooded area the spiritualist camp is and you know you have a bunch of uh tree trunks as seats and at the front of this area would be a psychic medium and they would scan the crowd and they would pick out different people to what they what they call reading for so they would say can i read for you meaning i'm going to communicate allegedly supposedly communicate with your dead loved ones and i'm going to deliver messages from them to you okay so every time without fail, I always sat in the back, but every time without fail, no matter who it was, male or female, it didn't matter, every year they called on me and said, can I, can I read for you? And mm -hmm. I would always say yes out of curiosity. And every year they would tell me things that related to my life that was relevant for me, but other stuff that made no sense and didn't add up. And that's just like the devil. He'll give you truth mixed with lies. And that's what I encountered from really these are familiar spirits the bible talks about these spirits they're evil spirits assigned to you that probably have been assigned to every one of your generations or at the very least they've studied your generations and they know where you're susceptible what your weaknesses are how you're vulnerable because this is what they they've tempted your you know family members your ancestors and your ancestors have come and in, come into agreement with them in these different areas so it's created this inclination uh to gravitate toward this that or the other um, and to get you in a whole host of trouble and, and basically deception. You're agreeing with spirits of deception that come to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus, But Jesus said, I come to give you life and give it in abundance. Anyways, 2006, I'll wrap it up with this. In 2006, this was the second of the three years that I went to Lilydale. I was planning on a trip taking my little cousin. I was 20 at the time. I was planning on taking my 15-year-old cousin to Disney World. And that's in Florida. Orlando, Florida, for those who don't know, for those who are not from America, you're not familiar with America, um, you maybe you've heard of Disney movies. Well, there is a theme, there's a park you can go to and ride rides and 
a kids park and have fun and all that. And it's it's a Disney park. It's named from the same guy who created the Disney movies, uh, Walt Disney. So I was planning on taking my cousin there. The only people who knew about this trip were my cousin, his mother, and myself. Three people. So again, we're going to. We, I go to Lilydale with my mom and her friend. I go to Inspiration Stump. Immediately, the person, the so-called psychic medium, at the front of the the front of the area says, "Hey, can I read for you?" I'm all, again, I'm all the way in the back, and started. And I said, "Sure," because again, my curiosity always got the best of me. And they started to tell me I was going to be going on a trip to Florida, and that I I would be stressed out. I'd be by the beach and I'd be stressed out and just enjoy myself. Now, I was amazed because no one else knew about this except for my cousin, his mother, and I. And I wasn't wearing any clothing that said Florida on it. I didn't. I wasn't wearing any bright colored clothing. When you think about Florida, you think about neon colors. You think about bright oranges and greens and blues and various other colors. Well, I wasn't wearing any of that. So how did this person know I was going to Florida? I was planning on a trip and I ended up going the next month. It's because evil spirits posing as my family members, posing as my departed loved ones, communicated this to them because these familiar spirits were around me and knew my movements knew what I was doing and I even remember even though at the time I did not at this time I still believed in Sylvia Brown this was 2006 I didn't believe in demons I didn't believe in Satan I didn't believe in hell she sp spoke against that stuff but I even said what if these are demons deceiving that person and deceiving me so mm -hmm. The reality is, guys, witchcraft is dangerous. It's seductive. It's attractive. And there's different kinds of witchcraft. Dealing with psychic mediums, dealing with you, praying to your dead ancestors, that's all witchcraft. It's all garbage. Okay? You know, writing letters to the universe, love potions, um, you know, different things you can do. The, the Praying to the universe. To me, this is all witchcraft. It's all nonsense. It's deception. And the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan comes... He socks around the earth like a roaring lion seeking whom he shall devour. And we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So you see it with Harry Potter. You see it with other forms of witchcraft in the media. Don't mess around with this stuff. Flee it. Satan comes as an angel of light. He comes masquerading as an angel of light, as a beautiful being. He can come appearing good and wholesome and true and all of that, but really... He's evil, he's disgusting, he's despicable, and he comes to destroy you. And he'll come to destroy you with a smile on his face. This stuff is seductive. Yoga is a part of that. Don't mess with that either. A lot of people mess around with yoga. Yoga is from Hinduism. It means to yoke yourself to one of the Hindu gods, which are demons. It's evil. So, a lot of the youth are involved with witchcraft. Avoid it. Flee from it. If you know people are messing around with their horoscopes, any form of divination, numerology, anything... Tell them to get away from it. It's dangerous, it's deceptive, and it will lead to your destruction apart from Christ. And the more you mess with that, the more hostile you become towards the one true God. And that's why I was hostile, because I was messing around with witchcraft, with New Age occultism, with this spiritual deception. But praise be to God, the Lord Jesus Christ sought me where I was. He pursued me. He says this, and I'll finish it with this. He said to the apostles, and this is true for us, You didn't choose me, but I chose you. And, I, and he did that so we would bear fruit that would remain, eternal fruit that would remain for his glory and Father's glory. So trust in Jesus and be saved. Oh, thank you so much, Pastor James. Thank you so much. Uh, you really testified uh, about um, witch, uh, witchcraft. Thank you so much. So uh, I came to know that you are working in Lord and Je Lord and Jesus Ministries. Lord in Christ Ministry. Oh, yes. Lord in Christ Ministry. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, could you please, uh, in a briefly, yes, uh, could you please uh, in, uh, explain about your ministry? How uh, how did you envision this ministry, and uh, from when your ministry uh, was started? Uh, Please explain about sure. your ministries. And I'll keep it as short as I can. So it started out as Son of Man International Ministries. That's the name I had because the name that Jesus called himself more than anything else was Son of Man, Son of Man, Son of Man, which refers to Daniel chapter 7, the Son of Man in Jan Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Um, so I, I want to make everything Christ-centered. I want to make it about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. He's our Savior, our Redeemer, our, our Messiah. He's our, he's our everything. He's our all in all. We live and move and have our being in Jesus. So 
I don't want to make it about me. I didn't want, I, you know, God called me to, to raise up a ministry. He raised me up to, to start a ministry. And it had to be about Jesus. From the name to everything I do in, through, and by the ministry, it has to be about Jesus. And so the first name that came to me was Son of Man International Ministries. I thought that was great. But then God gave me the name Lord of Christ Ministries in 2019. And that's when I officially started the ministry. And the focus of the ministry, oh, I'm sorry, brother. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And what kinds of the future, what kinds of the work you have doing in through these ministries? Um, everywhere I go, everywhere I serve, because I partner with a lot of other ministries, my ministry goes. Right now, I'm the only person who's a part of the ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Lord willing, it's going to grow. And I know that. And the Lord has some big plans. He's given me a vision for the ministry. And it's amazing what he's going to do in, through, and by this ministry. But if I serve with a ministry called Camry, Christ's Arms May Reach You. If I serve with Rescue and Revive Ministries or the Father's Heart Ministry. Okay. These are ministries located in Rochester, New York, where I live. I bring my ministry with me. So it's about... I'm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Nick, uh, in the recent days, you came to the Kentucky Everest Predator America. So, would you? Uh, how did you feel about this uh, prayer ministry? And how would you like to inform any others prayer warrior about Everest Predator America? Um. How I, you know, Pastor Ashok invited me to it, and I've been involved since. Um, I've preached a sermon. I provided prayer points. I facilitated. Um, I this week I will be providing prayer points again, and so it's it's awesome to have believers from here in America and throughout the world who care about America and seeing America come back to Christ. Uh, to see Americans repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ to be saved from hell and the lake of fire unto eternal life. And I love it. Um, I would encourage everyone to get involved with it. You can contact either Pastor Ashok or myself, and the information will be in the description section of this video. Uh, you can do that, and we will get you connected with this. It's a Zoom call. It's a Zoom session, and we'd love to get you involved as the Lord leads. So it's, it's an awesome time of prayer, of worship, of preaching, and, you know, it's an hour and 15 minutes long. It's Saturday mornings. And, uh, you know, make the sacrifice. 7 Eastern Standard Time to 8.15. So make, make, that, make that sacrifice. And the Lord will be pleased. He will be pleased with that because we're putting him ahead of ourselves. Okay, so thank you so much uh, ab about the respect on America. So, Pastor James, um, in the present days, what is the actually spiritual need for America and American people? Spiritual need, they need Christ. They need to be born again. Uh, they need to have God's Spirit living within them. Uh, they need to have that connection with the Creator. People lack an identity. That's where you see a lot of gender confusion and sexual confusion. They, their identity is is per, been perverted by Satan. They need to know who they that they've been created in the image and likeness of God, of God fearfully and wonderfully made, and that they have a purpose, they have a destiny that God has created them to accomplish, to fulfill. And the enemy wants to keep them away from fulfilling that purpose, from fulfilling that destiny. And so he brings in a lot of deception. He brings in, he, he, a lot of people are, are suffering from trauma and abuse and betrayal and abandonment. And the enemy has orchestrated all of that so that they'll never come to God because then they end up blaming God for what happened to them. And then they want nothing to do with God. And so this is a big problem we see in America. There's been a lot of abuse, a lot of betrayal, a lot of neglect. And people take that out on God and they blame God. They see all the evil in the world and say, if there's a good God, why would he allow all this evil to happen? So a lot of people are hostile to the very idea of God because of the evil they see in the world. And they blame God for all this evil. But if people realize that God has given us freedom, freedom of choice, you want to say a free will even. Um, and people misuse the freedom that God has given them and, and they act sinfully. They do things that are wrong, that go against the law of God. And the law of God is founded in love. People do all kinds of things that are not loving. And that brings pain, that brings suffering, that brings trauma. I myself am a victim of sexual abuse as a child. I can't blame God for what that person chose to do to me. And I can tell you this, Jesus Christ has healed me from the pain, from the trauma that I experienced as a child. So if you, whoever sees this, has been sexually abused or abused in any way, Jesus makes all things new. And he can renew you from the inside out through the power of his Holy Spirit, but you have to trust in him as your Lord and Savior. 
If you put your place your faith in who Jesus is, the sinless Son of God, that He died on the cross for your sins to pay the penalty for your sins, which is hell in the lake of fire, that He's died to save you from that, and that He rose from the dead to make you right with God so you could be declared right with His righteousness. If you'll do that, your life will be transformed. And that's what America needs. And then you can have dignity and identity and significance. And you'll have fulfillment. That's what people want. And, they, and you'll be filled with love. We want love. We want fulfillment. We want to feel like we belong to something. You'll be a part of a community. We're communal creatures. We're created to communicate or to, to be in fellowship, to commune with other image bearers. So you'll have that as well in the church. A lot of people are critical of the church, but the church is made up of imperfect people, sinners saved by grace. Now, as Christians, we're called to walk in holiness. I'm not justifying sin, but we still fall short of the glory of God all the time. So, the point is, people need Jesus. He transforms you. He makes you a new creature. The triune God does, but I'm just specifically focusing in on Jesus. So the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit work in union and harmony. Unity and harmony to transform the lives of image bearers. And they can do that for you as well. But you trust in Jesus first. And he'll take care of the rest. He'll fill you with his spirit. You'll have a desire to obey him, to serve him, and to do the things that please him in his word. And um, that's what America needs desperately. I'll say this and then I'll be done. We need, a, we need agape love. Selfless, sacrificial love. And that's what Jesus demonstrated on the cross he said there's no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for his friends john 15 13 and that's what he did and that's what happens for you when you trust in christ he sheds his love abroad in your heart through his holy spirit he did that to me i'm a double organ donor donated one of my kidneys and 70 percent of my liver to save people's lives that's Three because of the need. love that they need to be made you if you have fear you're not made perfect in love you got to be made perfect in love and that's what casts out all this fear and this lack of an identity that you have in Christ, you'll have identity, fulfillment, significance. You'll have everything you need, and, and your life will be completely transformed. And the most important thing is you have eternal life. Your name's recorded in heaven, and you'll never perish. And so that's what America needs. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, this is the program, Asiska Paul Haru, in English. It is called The Moments of Blessing. So this is a program, my program name. And uh, uh, we are almost uh, end of the time of this uh, interview program. So at the end, at the last, what kinds of the message you want to deliver to our audience? Jesus loves you. Thank you so he much. He really loves you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor Nick. You have given your very precious time uh, and you share about your faith statement, your test life testimony, your very true story. So uh, everybody, I hope that everybody would be the blessed after watching and uh, hear, uh, listening this interview. Uh, thank you for your special time. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for having me. आशीष का पल हरो यह हो आशीष का पल